is going to be the lovely day before it goes shitty and cold. So I'm getting out and about whilst I can. Tex Arios made a really good video last night about um, um, sport. And there was like a psychoanalytical look at sport and team sports in particular. Um, really interesting. I never really kind of thought about it in this way. Um, and he was talking about um, how there's a sexual sort of subtext to sport and, and team sports um, and how it kind of plays into that whole war. Um, you know, like just like that war mentality of like gaining territory and um, you see it like rugby is a good example of that. Uh, American football as well, like the idea you have to gain the territory um, to really win the game. You have to, you have to, um, rugby, you know, you can have, you can, even if you kick the ball out of play in rugby, you know, as long as you get possession as far down the field of the opponent, that's the, that's the kind of like the ideal. And it's like, you know, pushing back the opponent. And um, what he was talking about, about the, uh, the goal, the, the scoring a goal, it's almost like a phallic thing. It's almost like like a the, like um, kind of like a libido kind of thing, and um, the um, the goal math is like um, it's, it's like kind of crude. It's kind of like what he, he was saying, like um, almost like the open, you know, legs or something. It's like, a, but um, I don't really like. I mean, I like football and and um, team sports. I do I do enjoy football, but I, I get what he was saying about. In team sports, you can't, you can be held back by like the teammates you're with, like they can hold you. I suppose it's like an analogy for anything in life, isn't it? If you're on the wrong group, you can, they can hold you back, and um, that's where like you know boxing and tennis, and what else? Um, other sports like snooker and those, those kind of sports. You know, that's, that's like it's like a, a battle of. It's like a hundred percent focus of your will against another person's will, and it's just like that one-on-one -on -one kind of um, thing. And you don't really see, you don't really. It's amazing you don't see much about the psychology of sport. You don't see like I know there's psychology used in sport, but you never hear like the much about the sort of psychological undertones of sport itself. It's interesting that you know. You'd, And it's like it's like a modern version of war, isn't it? It's like the modern version of it. It, it does keep the masses sort of, um, you know, following football teams. It does keep people their focus on things that maybe keeps them away from violence and you know social disorder. And I do wonder if like football. I mean, football in in, in England it was created by the Freemasons in the eighteen like late eighteen hundreds. They literally, the Football Association was all put together by, free, you know, it was all um, conceived by Freemasons. And, you know, you, you you do wonder, like, you know, they are all in, involved in the police and civil service. And it's like they, um, they almost they created it for a purpose more than, you know, what it, what, what it appeared to be. Maybe it was to keep social order and that, that was their way of doing it. Like the kind of bread and circuses of ancient, you know, the ancient world. Um, it's interesting though, isn't it? It's not just about making, obviously it's the money aspect now as well. It's like, it's, it's mega millions involved in it and the betting and the, and there's probably lots of still bribery going on and FIFA is so corrupt as well. And But uh, it's the social control aspect, isn't it? It's the social, engineering social control aspect and then we see it and like, look at all the, the the taking the knee and now in, in sport and it's like it's, it really is like that vehicle to normalize it's, it's it's almost like the the ground zero kind of place for normalizing the culture football in this country um, where i live it's it's a very working class cult it's still a very working class thing even though Football matches are attended by very, you know, more middle classy people now, and uh, yeah, I just thought it was a good video he made, and it's like you can you can you can look into the psychology of so many things, and it's like that's why I love psychology. It just kind of you can look at the psychology of 
not just sport, you can look at the psychology of politics. Um, I was just thinking about politics the other day, actually. How you can lose your sense of identity in something like that. Um, I did get involved in politics um, back in twenty uh, back in twenty ten um, when I was I basically campaigned for my local MP, um, and she had I mean her party had very little they had very little chance of gaining you know seats in London, but you know we managed to you know we campaigned in such a way that we were able to get her in, you know, we're able to... The, the candidate she was competing against always wins here. She always wins. She's the Labour candidate and she always wins. And she's she's in power right now. Um, well, she's in the seat here right now. But back in 2010, it was like... It was almost like a kind of... That was like my mini little Trump... That was like a mini Trump thing experience for me, like being involved with that. It was like... Um, the Trump before Trump sort of thing. She's, I mean, she's not like Trump and she can't stand Trump, but, you know, it was like that campaign. There was something special about that campaign, just like going door to door. I, I was going around hundreds of doors um, speaking to people and, um, you know, they'd, send me, they'd, they'd, they'd ask me to go to areas that they didn't want to go to because it was a bit like, you know, a bit, a bit, a bit rough and I was happy to do it. And I was just like, because I, I, it's just that period in my life I was just, I, was, I kind of, I just thought it'd be a fun, you know, interesting experience, and I campaigned for a few months, and um, and you know, just talking to people at doorsteps, you know, because they know you're not a politician, and you just you you can just um, you know chat with them like a normal human being. You don't have to put on like a fake, you know, you're not all, there's no awkwardness, and um, I think I, you know, it was I was able to get through to people and stuff, and. Um, It was just the whole experience was fascinating. The whole process, like observing, like um, being there on the ele the election night in 2010, and um, you know the whole observing the whole voting, um, sorry, the whole counting process, how meticulous it is. It's really um, they, they count all through the night basically, and you, you I, I was also like. Um, watching the um i was one of the observers um with the other party people from other parties and i was one of the observers watching the you know taking a tally of what i was seeing coming out and we had to sort of take that in turns like a shift pattern and um that that's why i was so shocked by what happened in america with that recent election how people weren't able to get up close to the you know the the um you know, they weren't able to do the count properly and they had to watch it on a monitor or something. And that, that's dodgy right there. If you have to watch it on a monitor, that's just, you know, that's removed. That's like secondhand, you know, experience right there. You can't tell what's going on. Um, but, um, yeah, I, it, it was just like, um, I was thinking back to that um, time when I was involved in, you know, politics like that. It wasn't like a, you know, it was just more like just kind of a local level and, it really does change how you kind of think. It, it does have that effect on your politics, and that's why it's quite dangerous. Because you do start thinking of like you're in, you're part of a football team. You really do start thinking like that. You start thinking like, yeah, you know, you, you start ignoring almost the the bad things about your candidate and your party. It's not my party. I don't really have a political party because you know I I, I, I don't like that party now. <laughs> it's only because I, I thought she was a good candidate at the time, and I just wanted to kick out the other this other woman who's always in power and she's always just you know. Um, but, um, yeah, it was, it, it kind of opened my eyes a little bit how, it, how easy it is to fall in, fall into that mindset of like being a part of a football team almost like you, you think your team's, you know, oh, we're, we're the, you know, we're the, you, you kind of close down your mind to what's, you know, the bad about your team and then you only see the bad things in the other team. And, um, I think a lot of politicians probably like that. They, they, they just, they have that blind spot. And it, it, it's like, that's why it's dangerous. That's why it's like, a, it's an illusion. It's like a dangerous illusion like that. Um, oh, but it was so cool on the election night though. It was so, it was like, it's just one of those things like you, you, you kind of look back on as like, it's just an, it was an experience. Um, I didn't, you know, when, 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 you know there, was a, there was like a, t a point early in the morning where they were like, the, the, our team were tabulating the information as it was coming through. And they just basically said to us like, 
yeah we've won we've done it we've won and it was like wow it was like it was amazing because that's like that that was like a trump kind of experience because she you know that party had never i think it was only in this part of london that, that my area where she, liberals won liberal democrats won and fucking hell man i i, I did work fucking hard for her man i, I, I you know and, and a lot all the other men it was all like people my age kind of running around for her and you know, I put my I put a fucking heart and soul into that, man. It was like, so it felt really good, like to when when that result came in. And um, the, the Labour candidate, the other the other lady, her rival, she was so bitter. She, she was so bitter. She was given, you know, they have to give the concession speech thing, and she was so bitter. She was just talking about the negativity of the campaign and blah blah blah. And there was no negativity, you know, um, but. Like politics, man. I, I don't think I'd ever. I don't think I'd ever want to get involved in that. Again, I don't think, because. Oh man, it's just it's just a headache. It's just a headache. All that stuff. It's not fun. It's you know she got in when she got elected. She had she said she had to deal with the civil service and she said like it was like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people. Um, in Westminster and it's like that that would just you know. <laughs> And it's all you know, it's just the, the workload, and it's, it's. I think it was like people saying about Trump, saying about being president. Um, it's actually the worst job in the world, probably. Um, it really must be the worst job in the world. It look, it looks sort of glamorous, but it's not. I don't can't can't imagine because you just you don't get you know. You, there wouldn't be any rest, would there? There'd be no kind of. I don't fancy it today, kind of thing. I want to have a break today. You know, it's no, you don't get to have that. You know, it's just like all, you know, scrutinised all the time. And um, and Trump actually looked. I thought Trump in his last year in office looked quite tired. He looked to me. He looked like he was just going going through the motions a little bit, like reading from teleprompters and. When he was doing the rallies, just all the tele... It wasn't... You look at him a few years ago, like 2016, he was, he was just adding li adding lib all the time. It was just... He was hardly reading the teleprompter. But then he kind of mellowed a little bit and he just kind of, like, I thought... He looks a bit kind of tired now or something. He looks a bit like he... He's probably going... Now he's doing all the media stuff. That's, like, his area. That's his meat and drink, when it, all that media stuff. That's where he's, like, the master of that stuff. And he probably realised, actually, that politics is... A bit like Tex Eros was saying about the team sport, like you like found with the Republican Party, how there's so many, so many people blocking him from doing what he wanted to do and turncoats and people like, you know. Now he gets to be the master of his own situation again and he can um, build that media empire. So it's exciting.